ChatGPT, please create an elevated and improved version of Dan Barber's braised short rib recipe. Creating an improved version of Dan Barber's braised short ribs recipe involves making adjustments and additions to enhance the flavors and textures of the dish. Here's the elevated version. Wow. Hey everyone, welcome back to the AI Kitchen. Today we're making something pretty crazy, elevated braised short ribs. I'm excited about this. I will say that this is, without a doubt, the most expensive recipe we've cooked on this channel. I'm pretty sure. These short ribs were not cheap, but they're gonna be delicious. I've had short ribs in the past. Never this recipe that AI created, but I have had short ribs and I've always enjoyed them. So I expect nothing less from this recipe. So to start it off, we do have quite a bit of prep work to do and it's pretty funny the carrots I got. You need two carrots for this and I ordered carrots and got, I don't know, 300 carrots, something along those lines. And this, I mean, I guess if you're ever like short on cash, just go buy a bag of carrots. This would feed you for a couple, a couple weeks, I'd say. And it was like $4 for all those carrots. Let me rinse these and then we'll chop them up. All right, so we've got our two nice, beautiful carrots and we're gonna dice them up. Now I'll say I had this recipe where I used to cook short ribs and I remember it being just insanely delicious. I feel like it'd be cool to dig that recipe up. It's probably in my email or something from back in the day and cook that again. Whoop, there goes a straight carrot. This is diced, what is diced? Let me look that up. It's like really small. There's gotta be a lazy way to do this, right? Don't I have a dicer? I feel like that cuts it too fine though. I'll just do it by hand. But yeah, this old recipe I used to make on the smoker with short ribs was like incredible, incredible, incredible. I made it for Christmas a couple years back. This one does not require a smoker though. So that may or may not make it better or worse. I'll definitely tell you at the end, which I prefer. And if it turns out that the smoker version is my favorite, then maybe I'll make a follow-up recipe where I make that. I've done that in the past where I just go off book and just do my favorites of things because why not show you? All right, so basically I want to dice up two carrots. I would say this is a good recipe to cook on a special occasion, holiday, birthday, you know, we got Christmas coming up, so this would be a great Christmas meal. But for you, you know, I don't know, maybe your birthday or your, uh, your loved one's got a celebration. You could treat them with this really, hopefully amazing elevated short rib recipe that ChatGPT has come up with. All right, so I'm just gonna put these carrots in a, in a separate little bowl here and work on the other vegetables. There's several vegetables that we're gonna need to saute all together. I don't really mind mixing them up now. I just put them all in this bowl when I'm done prepping them. And the next vegetable is an onion. So grab an onion, swing your onion round and round and start chopping that as well. I believe it's chopped, right? Chopped or diced? You know, I'll say this, so the recipe calls for a large onion. I don't know, I'd call this like a, a medium onion. It was kind of hard because I didn't go pick up the groceries. I ordered them with Walmart, not sponsored. But you know, Donnie Walmart, is that a person? <laughs> Reach out if you're interested. No, I just ordered an onion and it ended up being kind of a small onion. I don't think it's a huge deal, but. All right, so anyways, chop up an onion. It doesn't say to finely dice or anything, so I'm not going crazy. I'm just doing kind of bigger sized onion bits. And that's gonna go in with my carrots over here. I wonder if this is all gonna add flavor or if you're gonna, I guess you can eat all this too. It's almost like a stew, but not really a stew. I don't know, we're gonna see. Up next, you want two celery stalks. Again, ordered way too many. I guess I could have some ants on a log. You guys know what ants on a log is? Is that just a, a weird Dave thing? Ants on a log is like celery with peanut butter on it, like in the little divot there goes all the peanut butter. And then you put like raisins mixed in and those are the ants. And then the log is the celery with the peanut butter. Isn't that fancy? Okay, so chop up two stalks of celery without cutting your finger. Always the goal on this channel is to not cut our finger. Wonderful, glorious. A lot of people hate celery. It's divisive, or is it divisive? All right, our last vegemol is uh, four cloves of garlic. I've started being lazy and just ordering the pre-peeled garlic. I guess I should thank viewer Brian Klaus. He kept telling me to do it. I finally listened. It takes me a while to listen to good advice, but you notice it takes a lot of people a while to listen to good advice. It's hard for people to accept advice. Deep thoughts with AI Kitchen. Why are we called AI Kitchen, guys? Are you new here? If you are, it's because I like to let AI make our recipe. And I feel like eventually there's gonna come this moment where the AI recipes that are being made by AI are gonna be better than any recipes out there. And all of a sudden, I'm gonna have the most delicious cooking channel because I'm trusting in the robots. <laughs> I've just given in at this point to the robot. All right, so dice up four cloves of garlic. I did five because I can't help myself when it comes to garlic. I just always put one extra. I've never regretted it, not once. Okay, so 
Another thing we're gonna need is some pearl onions. They're for a later stage in the recipe, but I figured we should get them ready now because you have to peel them. I've never peeled a pearl onion, have you? Um, and you're supposed to do a pound, I think? No, a cup. Okay, that's not as bad. So I'm gonna try to peel some pearled onions. I'm pretty sure I've eaten these. I've never cooked with them though. Is there a trick to peel these easily, guys? That I should know about? You know, like garlic, you push it down and that's how you peel it? This seems like a pain. Hold on, let me try cutting. If I cut the ends off, it'll come across easier. This is a pain. There's gotta be a better way to do this. Oh, I just shot it in my eye. Is that gonna make my eyes water? Did I get it all? I think I got it all. Hmm, okay, one cup worth. Let's see how many that is. Oh, it's so many. Oh, it's an aggressive amount. All right, well, I gotta peel all these, so let me work on that, and I'll be back in just a mo. I don't know, guys. I just watched a tutorial video on how to peel pearl onions quickly, and it seems like it would take longer than just peeling them this way. It said to boil the onions for a minute, and then after you boil the onions for a minute, put them in an ice bath for a minute, and then they'll come out easier. I don't know, do I wanna do all that? I don't really wanna peel these, I'll tell you that. They're not fun to peel. This is that part of the video where I start wishing I had a sous chef. Do you know what a sous chef is? Does all this prep for you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it because my hands can't handle this. All right, so it says cut off the root end. Which end's the root end? Yeah, so basically cut this end off of the onion. Can you see that? It's this end here. And then we'll throw it into boiling water. I get like, I'll, I'll be honest, in the winter time, I think I've talked about this on the channel, I get carpal tunnel whenever it's cold out. Like, I guess I always have carpal tunnel, but during the winter time when it's cold, it gets really bad. My hands like fall asleep all the time. Been like that for like 15 years. And so I try to find ways to avoid small repetitive motions like peeling these pearl onions and it seems like this is the way to do it you cut off these roots you throw them in a boiling water for a minute then you throw them in an ice bath and then they should just squeeze right out if all goes well we are gonna need some herbs <laughs> a guy named herb we're gonna need uh, what is it bay leaves which is this one rosemary and thyme this is like not really prep work it just says two sprigs what's a sprig one two sprigs of rosemary I think these are to add like aromatics. So wait, that was thyme. Two sprigs of thyme, two sprigs of rosemary, and two bay leaves. I think that's just gonna add like a, like a fragrance, I don't know, like whatever herbs do to food. I'm not, I'm not a professional cook. Have I mentioned that yet, guys? This channel, we're not professional cooks. We just do the best we can uh, using AI to help create our recipes. So my water's aggressively boiling. I'm gonna put the pearl onions in it for like one minute. And while that gets ready, I'm gonna make an ice bath. Just gonna get a bunch of ice. Put the ice in water, and this should be the path to really easily peeling these. All right, so out of the fire and into the ice. <laughs> these onions will go into the ice bath, like so. Get in there, get in your icy home. All right, so I think they should be ready. Take the onion out, squeeze it, it said. Oh, um, I think I over peeled it. Interesting. Oh, that's so cold. All right, so I think this is working though. Hey, look at that. Peeled. Hey now, you're an all-star. It's working, guys. It's working. We did it. I don't know if this is part of the onion. I think that's part of the peel. Kind of hard to tell. All right, so there you go, guys. Life hack for you of the day. That's just what we like to provide on this channel is just life hacks and, and life house the band. You know, we provide that as well. I might be over peeling. Maybe not. Maybe that's right. I mean, so much is coming off them that I'm wondering if it's gonna really be considered a cup when I'm done. Oh, this water is so cold though. Ah, run away. Run away, onion never coming back. All right, so we've got our one cup of peeled pearl onions here. I would say that hack is probably worth the effort, unless you're my brother. I know that's a weird thing to say, but I was just at my brother's house and his stove, it takes like 20 minutes to boil water on his stove. So I don't know if it's worth that if you have to spend 20 minutes boiling it. Anyways. That's the, I think all the veggies and stuff that we need. Now, if you wanna be an overachiever, you can measure your beef broth because you are gonna need two cups of that here in a minute. You're also gonna need two cups of red wine, but I just used that. Which one do I need first? Oh, one more thing we could do for prep work is you need the zest of one orange. So we could probably go ahead and do that. I got my little uh, fancy dancy micro plane here and what easier way is there to zest something? I believe this was also sent to me by Brian. Brian's coming in clutch in today's video. I was at my brother's house, like I said, and I asked him if he had a zester and he gave me this like weird little thing that was like a, the size of a toothpick. And uh, it was a lot harder to zest something with that. This thing is incredible compared to that. I will say though, it looks like the thing they uh, do to your feet if you go get a pedicure, they just uh, zest off your dead skin and calluses. How's that for delicious? I like to bring up all the, uh, the tasty things while cooking. There you go, zest of an orange. I think we've got everything we need. Let me pop these in here. 
Are we good? Okay, so I think we're heading over to the stove, guys. Let's uh, reconvene over there near our big Dutch oven that's waiting for us. Oh, actually, before we do that, one more thing. Let's take these short ribs out and throw some salt on them, maybe some pepper. It's four pounds that it calls for. And again, I did an order, so I ended up getting like six pounds. I'm only gonna, should I do all four pounds? I might do all four pounds, or all six pounds, because I don't think it matters. Well, but then it might crowd the pan. I'm not gonna. I'll find like a crock pot recipe to do later this week with the rest. All right, so what we wanna do is take some salt and just salt up these bad boys. I'm using coarse salt, should I? I don't know, maybe I should use fine salt. I probably should have done this at the very beginning to let the salt kind of like soak in. I might regret waiting so long. I'm pretty sure with the other recipe I did where I smoked it, I uh, added the salt and dry brined overnight. So that is a big difference here. I feel like it's not really taking any of the salt. Maybe I should use fine, I don't know, but I don't wanna, I'm getting salt everywhere. All right, let's throw some pepperoni on it. I'm kidding guys, it's pepper, not pepperoni. Now that I've cross-contaminated my pepper shaker, let me go wash it. Again, speaking of Brian Klaus, I think he sent me this pepper shaker too. Brian Klaus, you're having an influence on me. All right, anyways, let's head over to the uh, stove top and get this thing fired up. I'm excited. I want to preheat your oven to 325 degrees for in a minute. Not yet. Right now we're going to be on the stove top getting everything ready, but then they're going to be in the oven for like two to three hours. I will say one of the things that ChatGPT wanted me to add was wild mushrooms. Uh, I'm personally, I don't like mushrooms. Uh, I looked it up. It seemed like wild mushrooms are stuff you like pick outside. When I typed wild mushrooms into Walmart where I was ordering my food, nothing came up as an option other than just like standard... Uh, portobello type mushrooms, which I don't think are the same. So if you can get wild mushrooms out of your garden or whatever, and you like wild mushrooms, they probably would add a lot to the dish. And so if you don't have a Dutch oven, I'm sure any pot would work. I have a Dutch oven. You wanna put it over medium high heat and then throw some olive oil down. And once you have your olive oil down and it gets warm, I don't really know if I'm, it's hot enough yet. We're gonna just see how much it sizzles. You can take a rib and plop it on there. Yeah, it's sizzling. And I'm just gonna put them all in. Hopefully they all fit. We'll see. This is why I didn't do the rest of them. Eh, they don't. I'm gonna have to work in batches. So let that sear for two to three minutes. Or two minutes probably would be fine. All right, so it's been about two minutes. Let's flip this over to the next side. And sear that. I'm trying to get a nice sear on each side. All right, let's do another little flipper reel. There's a lot of sides on these things. We're now to the narrow side, so I could probably add my other two in. All right, so this has been seared on all the sides, so we're gonna pull it off and just set it aside. You don't wanna keep it in here, you wanna take it out. This one has one more side. And so does this one. Oops, get back in there. See, yeah, I think that looks pretty good, right? Nice sear on both the sides there, looks really nice. And that's gonna eventually be our meat. Let's let this go for like a minute, minute and a half, and then we'll move on to the next step. While we wait though, I'm gonna try to successfully corkscrew this thingy. I've never used this, so I don't know what I'm doing particularly. Do I do this? Oh, look at that. It seems like it's coming out. Let me just pull. Is this gonna make a big pop? I don't like this. It's gonna pop on me. Hold on. Ah! <laughs> I did it. <laughs> Smells like, uh, smells like wine. This is what the recipe calls for. It is Cabernet Sauvignon. Sauvin, Sauvin, Sauvignon? I'm not a drinker. You're gonna need two cups of this in a minute. Let's take our last bit of short rib out. Set that aside. I love short rib. Just like, I'm getting excited just smelling it. Okay, so in this same pot, we're gonna throw in our veggies. Not our pearl onions, mind you. Woo, spicy. I'm gonna turn down the heat a tiny bit to medium. And you're gonna saute these for like five minutes. I should get like a wooden spoon, but it was so uh, simmery that I just started using this. Let me get a spoon. So you're gonna let these go until they're softened. It says about five minutes. Move it around every now and then and just let it soften up. And uh, we'll be back when it's ready for the next step. It smells amazing. All right, so we're back. The, the vegetables have sauteed for five minutes. We're gonna add two cups of red wine. Red, red wine. Glug, 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 glug. There's our first cup. And here's our second cup. You can hear it sizzling. And then just stir that up a little bit, scraping off any bits at the bottom, it says. Now this is gonna cook until it, if it, like it reduces by half. I don't know how long that is. It says simmer, so I'm gonna turn the heat up a little. Let me ask ChatGPT. 
I said, how long does it take the wine to reduce by half? It says, it depends on the heat level, but it can take about 10 to 15 minutes. Medium high heat, it will reduce faster than low heat. Okay, so I'm gonna do medium high and I'm gonna check on it in 10 minutes. All right guys, I'm back. It's been like, oh, I don't know, nine minutes, just about. And uh, this is looking pretty reduced to me. So let's see what our next step is. All right, so at this point, let's reduce the heat a little. We're gonna add our two cups of beef broth into the mix. Ah, beautiful, beautiful. We're gonna add our bay leaves. We're gonna add our rosemary and our thyme as well. And we're also gonna add two tablespoons of tomato paste. We got this over here, I'll just use that. To add the tomato paste. And then we're gonna add back in our short ribs, I believe. Let me just make sure, yeah. Add back in our short ribs that we have sitting to the side, like so. Now it does say to make sure they're fully submerged. I'm hoping water displacement, displacement makes that possible. But I'm gonna put them bone side up because at the bottom there's like a, a hard bone here and that means more of the meat will be submerged even if they're not fully submerged. And the bones will kind of be sticking out at the top. If I can fit them all, of course, that's the question. They shrunk a little when I was searing them so I think I can fit them all. Where's the bone on this one? I can't find a bone, there it is. Although they may move anyways, I don't know. We'll see, we're doing our best. There we go, okay. So there's all our beef ribs. How good does that look? It looks so good. Now we wanna cover, put it in the oven, which is preheated to 325 degrees. Bye bye little buddies, we'll see you soon. Ugh. Now again, total cook time is gonna be about three hours, but it said halfway through, which would be about an hour and a half. Maybe I'll do an hour 15. We're gonna add the balsamic vinegar, the honey, the orange zest about halfway through. So let's let it cook and we'll be back in an hour or so. All right, everyone. So it's been like an hour and a half since we put in our short ribs. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna add a little bit to it. We're gonna add some balsamic vinegar, a tablespoon of that. And we're also gonna add a tablespoon of honey. So this thing I'm just using to measure that out. <laughs> okay. And then we're also gonna add our orange zest. Add our orange zest. I'll take my cell phone over there to record what it looks like so I don't have to move all my cameras. All right, so here's what we're looking at here. Hopefully this looks delicious. Oh, it does. It does look, it's getting all foggy. There's your short ribs so far, about an hour and a half in. Let's add in those ingredients. The orange zest. Now should we spread it out a little? And like I said, the balsamic and the honey are gonna go in there too. Just add, add a little bit more flavor to it. And then we'll put our lid back on, like so. We're gonna let it go another hour, and so that'd be two and a half hours total. And then we're gonna put we're gonna put the pearl onions in for the last 30, I think, and the wild mushrooms if you're doing that. So let me set a timer for an hour. All right, guys, it's been another 30 minutes on the old uh, short ribs there. So we're gonna add in the pearl onions, I believe. Let me see if there's anything else. Yeah, the wild mushrooms. We're not gonna do that part. So just the pearl onions. All right, let's take a look here. Oh. Oh, that smells amazing. Add the pearl onions in there. Put the lid back on. 30 more minutes and it should be done. All right guys, we're at like three hours since we started our short ribs and they should be done. I'm gonna take them out. We're gonna take a look at them. <sighs> they have certainly been a labor of love. It's over here, we'll take a look at them. Oh, glorious. Now it does say we should take out our little like leaves that we put in there. But let me try to do that. I think I got a bay leaf in here somewhere too. I don't know. Oh yeah, here it is. I think there's two bay leaves if I can find them. I mean, worst case scenario, I'll find them in the food. Look, it's like falling off the bone at this point. That looks incredible. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take some and put it into a bowl. Imagine that. Look at that, this bone, it's been rendered useless. Look at that. Oh, put that in a bowl. We're supposed to get some of the liquid with some of the veggies and such. We'll get it like a little onion, a little more of the liquid. Can we find some like, uh, yeah, carrots? There we go. There's our braised elevated short rib. My mouth is watering, guys. This is like three hours of cooking for this moment, all leading up to this moment. I'm nervous. All right, here we go. Should be able to just get a little bit, look at that, it just falls apart. There's our braised short rib. Get a little carrot action. This is gonna burn my mouth, isn't it? There's a little orange on there too. Wow. Oh my gosh. Let me try the celery. It's so rich and decadent, it's absolutely incredible. I love short ribs, and this is like a perfect cook of a short rib. Yeah, I would say if you want to impress someone for you know Christmas coming up or something like that, cook them this, and then they'll be like, whoa, where'd you learn to cook, yo? 
because I'm just assuming you're impressing some California surfer bro. You can actually like kind of tear it apart a little bit too and then I'll maybe help it cool. I feel like I want even more of that liquid. Let me add a little more. All right, so I got some more of the liquid. I mean, I don't need to keep eating it, do I? I've already told you what I think, but I want to keep eating it. The orange is super unique. Like it adds a citrusy hit to it that's actually really good. I think that's part of what's making it elevated. All right, so in regards to this, I'm gonna give it a 10 out of 10. I loved it, it was delicious. Totally recommend making this. It's expensive. I think it was like $27 worth of meat, just in the meat alone. But then again, like all in, I probably didn't spend more than 40 bucks on it. And to go just to McDonald's is 40 bucks with a family of five now. It's actually more like 60 bucks. So still cheaper than going out to eat. Way healthier, way tastier. So I recommend it, try this out. The Elevated Braised Short Ribs, created by AI. What do you, who to thunk? Thank you guys, bye-bye.